Hey guys, it's Nikki from Love of Dirt. Welcome back to another video. Um, today I thought I'd do a bit of a tour of our garden and now that it is early spring. So for us um, here, we, we do a bit of growing in spring and then we kind of wind back in summer. We just put a few things in. We don't go as hardcore in summer. So it's a bit different to a lot of other climates. Um, our peak growing season is autumn and winter um, because we just have less issues. Um, so let's go have a look, um, see how things are growing and I'll show you what we're up to at the moment. So this is a bed that we planted out in March and then we've replanted again in um, July. Um, but most things are, are really just going to seed in here now. So I've got um, some tatsoi going to seed up the back and these lettuces. I left the broccoli in for the side shoots. Um, I did put in some cabbage in here, but I did have the cauliflower going. So it, it kind of... It kind of stunted it a little bit um, there wasn't enough space for it to grow so I'm not sure if that's actually going to do anything but we've got some lettuce in here Tatsu is still producing um, lots of celery and some more sugar snap peas so these are the ones seeds that we planted um, in July so what I've done in here as well is I put some because I, I had all of my um, sugar snaps up here which I've taken out um, from the March planting, um, I've put some beans in here um, just to fill that space because um, they'll grow quite quick when I'm ready to sort of rotate through this that bed. Okay, so if you watched my video last week, this is our um, recently planted in August. Um, so we, we just prepped this. We've um, buried some bakashi. I'm still waiting for... I've harvested a lot of the dried out um, purple potted peas. I'm just waiting for a few more. Um, and then I'll pull those out. But in here we've basically got lettuce and we've got some Swiss chard. I've planted some bean seeds along this edge and we've got our corn and there's some um, cucumber seeds in there as well. So they haven't germinated just yet. Um, this corn I think is a Balinese sweet corn. It's an heirloom um, sweet corn. Uh, not as sweet as some of the um, hybrids, um, but I'm really wanting to make sure that I'm able to use my own seeds these are my seeds from last year so I'm gonna do a viability check if they're okay then I'll probably list some for sale in our shop but um yeah so that's that is our basically our August bed we do three plantings of corn here so these August um, September we'll do another lot probably um, October November and then we'll do some more in January so we get three runs of corn but it's really important when you are planting corn one you need to plant in blocks so they do pollinate um, two you can't have different varieties going at the same time because they do cross pollinate and it actually affects the taste of the crop so like if you're doing a popcorn or a, a maize um, so like a glass gem or a, a blue a mini blue um, with a next to a sweet corn you're gonna have that cross contamination and it actually will show up in the kernels of your corn um, so just something to note, but we do have a really long corn growing season, so we can harvest right up until, till May basically. Um, so yeah, we try to get the three runs in, but that's, that's our latest bed that we've planted. So this one here is our June bed. So, um, we've still got a couple of collies going. I'm not sure how they're going to go. They are likely to just go sprout straight to seed. Um, but we've got the side shoots happening for our broccoli. Um, we're getting carrots that are close and we've got these um, potted peas growing. So these are uh, green feast ones. Um, so yeah, they're, they're sort of filling out now. So we'll be able to harvest those soon. But yeah, that's, that's um, a bed that we set up in June. Um, so we'll probably be um, rotating this around in October to something new. So my son has this thing every time we go to Bunnings, we have to buy snapdragons. So they are everywhere at the moment, which is fantastic because there's a lot of uh, little parasitic wasps loving on them. <laughs> I can't catch it on camera. It's, but uh, yeah, there he, there he goes. Um, they're really great for the garden. So, and then we've got the corn, blue cornflower. So the bees are just, these are beacons for bees. So. We are um, definitely firm believers of planting flowers every time you plant um, plant out a garden. I've got a little bit slack over winter, um, but we're sort of catching up now, making sure that we're sticking um, flowers in the corners of each bed. 
So this is our little perennial bed. Um, we've got the asparagus finally dying back now. Um, the Madagascan bean that I, I chopped back, um, I think in a video a couple of months ago, um, it's actually not doing too well. One has actually died, but that's okay. We've got heaps over here. I've got heaps of seeds, so I'll be able to replant that um, when it gets a bit warmer. Um, but just some um, perpetual spinaches there, some sorrel and some garlic. Um, society garlic in there again this salvia it kind of takes over but i like that it fills that corner really well so i'm gonna leave it for now but that's our little perennial bed i did actually chuck in another asparagus into this is actually a wicking bed um, because of the tree roots over there we're making all of our bed, new beds out here are gonna are uh, wicking beds um so there is a uh, purple asparagus in there, so I'm interested to see how it goes with a wicking bed situation. Um, but yeah, looking forward to that. So this bed's just, um, it's a veg pod. Um, we've had it for a while now, got it second hand. Um, but we've got eggplants on, um, there's strawberries in here. These are garlic that I planted a little bit um, late. So I won't be harvesting these probably until November, which is, is a risky move but um it is what it is i didn't get them in until late um but we have these these french onions so they're more like the little they're like a spring onion but they bulb up but this time of year every time we get black aphids and they just seem to to beacon in on these like they're not fully infested yet but you can see the little black dots um so what i normally do about now is just pull them all out you see those black dots there's one there um yeah <laughs> um but yeah they really they take over and they just suck the life out of these so i think what these are doing are kind of duplicating at the moment so they they make the little little um shallots i guess i don't know what variety they are so i was given them given to me and as a a spring onion and they just instead of getting really huge they um duplicated so I've just been sort of every time they duplicate I get these aphids I take them all out I wash them then I divvy them up and I replant them so it's a really cool one um I've never seen them go to seed at all they've just been the little clove little um I guess they're cloves uh yeah I've just been replanting those so the snow peas like that's I don't know eight foot <laughs> it's just crazy tall I can't I hadn't need a ladder to come get them or I do what I do is I pull them over and collect them but we are actually getting I don't think I'd ever say this but we're getting a bit sick of snow peas at the moment because this has just been producing so much so this variety is a, a giant yakuma and as you can see it lives up to the name because the pods actually get quite large um is a massive one here so bigger than my hand they have these beautiful um purple flowers I'm definitely going to plant these ones earlier on in the season instead of the snap peas because they are so prolific and they'll just keep us going um, while we're waiting for things to grow. Um, but this bed here will be the next one that I turn over. We've been harvesting loads of carrots out of here. Um, so they're getting a decent size. Um, you know, they're probably, I guess, what a shop would call a, I don't know, a rangy carrot. <laughs> I think they call them. They're not quite baby carrots, but they're um, not quite the full size. Um, so these have been really good. These ones are actually called the Corotus. I find that these ones are the best because they color up really early. So they make really good baby carrots. You can pick them at any stage and they don't look sort of insipid at the dinner plate. Um, with a couple of other varieties like your Nanties and your, um, the all, all seasons varieties of carrots. They kind of look a little bit more, uh, a pale orange. It's not, not quite yellow but they're not as vibrant as these at um at at a young age so we've got two rows happening here i've obviously gone through i've just been pulling out as i need them i just come out just before dinner time like okay i need a carrot um so this bed will get um mostly cleared out of things like that i'll pull out all of the carrots and um sort this out this month so in here i will probably do some beetroots um i actually don't know yet i need to sort of sit down and figure it out i definitely need to get some zucchini happening um and i'm probably a little bit late for it 
for this time of year because we do have the cucumber fly which is very similar basically looks like a fruit fly does the same thing as a fruit fly but it stings cucumbers and um zucchinis so yeah <laughs> uh, so we do have to net them and then when when you net zucchinis then you have to hand pollinate so it does become a bit of a chore to grow them um, but they're always good their um, result like they they pump out um, the produce so it's always good to grow them I've still got the fennel we've been harvesting the bigger ones even taking some of the little ones because we've been liking them so much um, but yeah just a few things going to seed and we're harvesting the side shoots of the broccoli so again I'll probably cut those off soon and um, yeah we'll go again for our September in this bed um, I'll probably I'm not sure if I'm saving these seeds I'll see yeah they might stick around for a little bit longer um, just depend I've got some snow peas out the front as well it just depends on um, if the kids can tolerate any more <laughs> The blueberries that we have growing in pots are going nuts. Um, they seem to sort of inter, I guess every second year, they do a really, really prolific fruit like this. So this, last year, this one was the one that looked like this. Um, so these are two different varieties of blueberries. We have four in pots in these size pots. They do really well. This one's pretty old now. I think I, we got this before we got married. So that's eight years old. Um, but yeah, the blueberries um, are looking really good. So tip for these, lots and lots of water when they're at this stage. Lots of water. Um, they don't really need much in the way of nutrients. If you're going to feed them, um, I think what you're better off doing is repotting them before they flower and put them with a bark mix and um, azalea potting mix because they do like it acidic. Um, but if you're going to feed them sea salt or... Um, fish hydrolysate or seaweed extract um, they they are um, good options for these do not feed them with um, a blood meal I've done that before and I've almost killed it they just they just did not like it at all <laughs> could have been I didn't water it as much as well but that that was just my experience so I don't feed them too much I just repot them every two years now the aquaponics um, if you watched last week's video, I did a tour on this, so I'm not going to go too much into too much detail. But I will tell you, after I recorded that video, we lost a lot of fish because we didn't clean the filter out. So um, we're getting a lot of gum leaves from the tree up there falling in. So it's actually falling into the fish tank. So we need to sort that out um, so the filter doesn't keep getting blocked. Um, but yeah, we lost, I think... We started with 25 fish and I think we lost, um, I want to say 12. So we've lost at least half of them. So yeah, my husband's been too busy to come out and really have a look. It's been cold, we've had birthday parties, all sorts of stuff. So yeah, again, keep your fish happy. <laughs> as long as that's, then the rest will sort of be okay. But I was sort of starting to notice that it was getting like... If you look here, like this was starting to get a bit yellow, so I'm wondering if it became a little bit anaerobic um, because of the filtration system, system stuffing up. Um, so yeah, that's something that I'll keep an eye out for next time. So I just um, pulled another dead one out of there, so um, yeah, not ideal, but I guess at least it's out now um, and we can focus on fixing the filter filtration up. Um, and move forward and yeah I just have to get in the habit of doing it um, doing the filter clean when Nathan's too busy to do it. A little status update on the potatoes so these ones we planted back in July early July um, same seeds we've popped into some pots around here they're only just sort of coming up so I planted those probably about two weeks ago so they're taking a little bit of time um, but yeah, these are the white star. I'm not sure if they're any good for our climate. Um, I'll keep you posted on that. But this is our front garden, which is a mess right now and I hate it. But I did give up on those tomatoes. Um, I pulled them all out. I've got a bunch of green tomatoes, but they were just, they just weren't thriving. And I wanted the space for my zucchinis when I finally get it. But I am planning on overhauling this entire area. Looking at getting some um, galvanized arches 
and actually going back to um, the timber um, like what we've got out the back um, so I can fit a better configuration out here because the one thing that I did learn about this winter is our back garden is not that great for growing our root veggies um, so I need I need this front garden to be a little bit um, more useful um, so that's the plan for out here but I'll just um I've started protecting against fruit fly because I did see I think it was more of a cucumber fly I did um start I've started to put the net over so let's go have a look okay I'm not going to take the net off but it is just what's under it it's looking great so these are our black crims down here didn't want to risk fruit fly um like I said I think it was a cucumber fly so they probably wouldn't have been stung but um yeah didn't want to risk it because they're looking really really good um this lower end lane method that I'm using at the moment um is working really really well um I'll go up to the other side and show you the other tomatoes so these are Scorpio so this is a new variety that I'm trying out which is um another one for um hot humid climates um, so it's doing really well I've got some carrots here that need to come out so these are the cosmic purples um, they're looking really good um, I'm just letting everything else just go to seed in here so um, it's just really the tomatoes that I am loving at the moment loving on um, everything else I'm just letting go more snow peas these are the Oregon sugars so these are don't grow as hi <laughs> actually they're a lot shorter than the giant yakumas at the back um and they don't get as big um but if you've got a small space and you don't like things sort of taking over the world like they do these are a good option not as prolific um but yeah a good one for smaller gardens we still have a few broccoli on the go um i harvested this one the other day it was probably about four times the size of that one it was a good one um so they're probably they're the last really um i do have some actually over the other side but i don't know if they're going to head up in time before it gets too hot so this is the other front garden um was my garlic patch but is now more tomatoes i don't normally grow so many tomatoes this time of year but because we had such a fail from all of that rain in may i planted heaps um to overcompensate and I had to find homes for them so that's where these are this is normally our sweet potato bed in um, summer um, as you can see there's some sort of popping up here ready it's ready to go um, but this is where our garlic was we've pulled a few out that were really small and not doing very well um, I think my issue was curl grubs I th when I've pulled them out half of the roots have just been eaten off um, so I've still got a, a fairly good crop up the back there so the tomatoes, we've got um, two determinate varieties here, so I'll get cages for those. I won't string them up like the others. Um, I've got a Florida basket and a Burnley gem. Then over here, we've got um, cherry tomato, so that's a black cherry. We've got a Tommy Toe and a honeybee. And then I've got a Roma and a money maker. So this, that one's the first time I've been growing the moneymaker. So we'll see how that goes in our climate. Um, but yeah, these lettuces, these are the green oak leaf. <laughs> they are huge. Um, and our garlic, um, not quite ready yet. Uh, we'll wait until half of the leaves die back. So they will be, um, at the moment it's just two. So on this one if you look one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so that one's got eleven cloves um so basically once one two three four <laughs> so once this one has started to die back it's starting um that's when we'll harvest those so that's just the way that we do it um i will try and keep the watering kick the watering back um now um and then that will let them sort of finish up and then the the outer cloves that are already drying up won't rot so yeah these are the other broccoli that i had but i don't hold much hope for these guys uh, we shall see we'll see what they do so we've still got a rosella in from last year but this area here we are planning on um flattening off and doing three of these um 
I guess they're kind of market style gardens. Um, just this is just for me to help me up production for my seeds as well. Um, but yeah, I will. We're talking about putting a retaining wall there and flattening it off, and then we should get three of these rows along here um, and be able to easily access them. That's the plan anyway, but we'll see how long it takes for us to get around to doing it. The mulberry and the chicken run is, is loaded, locked and loaded. So we're gonna have lots of mulberries if the birds don't get to them first this year. Um, this is supposed to be a dwarf. <laughs> that was like above me. Um, it's so laden with fruit. It's kind of looking more like a weeping mulberry. Um, but yeah, kids love mulberries and all of the fruit that um, they don't get will fall down to the chickens and they'll they'll deal with it um, but yeah we love mulberry season so we're pretty happy with that once that's finished um, fruiting I am gonna chop it right back though because it's just too big for this area thanks so much for watching I hope you liked um, please give us a thumbs up and we'll see you guys next time bye